Hi guys, I'm Cashy Dylan and this is Piston.my and behind me, I have the Ford Everest. Now it may seem like just another SUV, but trust me, I've been driving it for a couple of days now. And underneath all this, it's actually an SUV that drives very nicely. So in this video, I want to tell you everything there is to know about the Ford Everest. Now let's start with the exterior first. From the front, Ford fans might recognize it because it almost looks like the Ford Ranger. Well, it's a continuation of the Ford design language, but that's only from the front. But from the side though, things are very, very different. Look at it. It's a very masculine, very macho kind of SUV. From the back is where things are an obvious nod to Ford Everest of yesteryears. You can see the obvious design evolution from previous Ford Everest. It's still very typical Ford language. It's still, I actually kind of like the fact that it's, Ford has kept it simple. There's not too much going on over here. It's actually quite handsome, actually. Uh, what I really like here, though, are the wheels, besides the obvious, very macho-looking design of the Ford Everest. But these 20-inch wheels actually accentuate the overall design of the car. And it comes wrapped in this Goodyear Efficient Grip SUV specific tyres. Now these are great tyres. I took this car on a drive to Greek in uh, Pera and went through all types of conditions as torrential rain, mud, sand, whatever, right? And I gotta say that these tyres, not even once did, did I feel the wheel slip. Pretty good. Looks great, feels good. When it comes to the powertrain, the Ford Everest shares the same engine as well as the same gearbox with the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. It is powered by the same 2-litre bi-turbo engine that produces 210 horsepower, which is quite good, and 500 Newton meters of torque, which is excellent. And it is mated to the same 10-speed gearbox. But besides that though, the Ford Everest is capable of towing up to 3 tonnes. 3 tonnes! And if you have anything that weighs over 750 kilograms, you can actually put it inside and the Ford Everest will, be hap will happily chug along all day long. I will get to the price later, but I don't know any other SUV in this price category that is capable of doing such things. Not only that though, but there's also a drive mode selector. So what this drive mode selector does is that it controls the four-wheel drive system of the Ford Everest to adapt to different terrains, such as mud, such as loose gravel, sand, and even has something called a downhill speed limiter. So what this does it is it maximizes traction when you're coming downhill, especially on loose gravel. So from the here, you can see that the Ford Everest is actually more better suited to rugged use, though it's very, very comfortable to use in urban situations as well. Now I want to talk to you about the interior of the car. But before we go inside, I want to show you this. So it comes with a powered tailgate, yeah? Which is always very handy. And it comes with this 12 volt socket over here. So in case you suddenly feel like plugging in your rice cooker or something like that. So this car is obviously, you know, very well suited to camping and such. I will take it camping. But what I really like about this is that you can press these buttons over here. This is a seven-seater, yeah, by the way. It's a seven-seater. But you can press these buttons and they re recline automatically. So this is a feature that I really like. But what I find is missing over here, though, is the tonneau cover. So I tried looking around for it. But perhaps Ford just forgot to pass it to me because it doesn't make sense that it doesn't come with tonneau cover and it has these latches over here which I suspect is to fit in the tonneau cover and then you can also see the slits over here where the cover might go so I'm not quite sure whether it's optional or whether it's not available in the Malaysian market but I guess you can buy this on YouTube or uh, eBay or something but it's available. And what the other thing is, they also can get back into place at the touch of a button again. So this is fantastic, and I think this is a must-have feature in seven-seater SUVs. Now let's go inside. Now inside the Ford Everest, 
is where things get a little disappointing. Because coming from the own, from a Ford Ranger Walltrack owner up to the Ford Everest, first thing that I notice inside here is that it is 95% identical to the Ford Ranger Walltrack. 95%, it's almost the same. The only things that are different are things like the seats, the fact that it comes with a panoramic roof, the stitching, and that Everest branding on the dashboard over there. Almost everything inside here is identical to the Ford Ranger Walltrack. Which, if you're going to be buying the Ford Everest, is kind of disappointing because the, the Ford Ranger Walltrack is actually about 50% cheaper, almost 50% cheaper to get an identical interior. I understand part sharing, I understand cost saving, I understand all this, you know, um, taking things out from the Ford parts bin. I understand that. But when it comes to the pricing perspective, you're paying 50% more, up to 50% more. You probably want something that feels and looks a bit more uh, different. I'm not gonna use the word premium because things, the, the, the feel inside here is it still feels very very nice i like this leather seat quality is great i don't quite like this and, and i've never liked this in the ranger wild track as well this big mega big black plastic bit over here so I never really quite like that but besides that all it actually feels very very premium and you also get a the new the latest generation ford sync 3 uh, system that come on, that comes with voice command gps and all of that it's it's a ford software right if i'm not mistaken it's provided by microsoft but i could be wrong but um, i really like the voice command system in the ford sync 3 system because it actually works better than other systems such as like the bmw or mercedes-benz system seriously the ford, ford sync 3 voice voice command is excellent and uh, it also comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so your whole digital life can be com uh, controlled via this 8-inch screen over here. In fact, the only thing that is different between the Ranger Wildtrak as well as the Ford Everest is perhaps the software. But I suspect even the latest generation Ford Ranger Wildtrak will come with the same, uh, the same software as well. Other than that, it's a brilliant place to be in. Now the dash in the front may look identical to the Ford Ranger wall track, but behind there, here though, the back seats, it's actually a very nice place to be in. It's, the leather seats are fantastic, it's very comfortable. And you also get this uh, aircon, aircon blower controller over here via this rotating dial. And I really like the fact that it comes with this three pin plug over here. And it has another 12 watt socket. So this is great, so essentially this the Ford Everest comes with two 12 watt sockets and you get this independent uh, personal aircon blowers over here and cup holders. The driving feel of the Ford Everest is actually quite nice because it's actually a very comfortable car. Now the suspension, even though it shares its underpinnings with the Ford Ranger Walltrack, but the suspension is different. Actually, only the front suspension is identical to the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. The Ford Ranger Wildtrak uses leaf spring suspension at the back, but not the Ford Everest though. This is better suited to comfort and you really do feel it. The suspension is a bit on the softish side, which is a bit unnerving, especially at high speeds because it's, it's a bit lumpy. But on regular roads though, like all this at slow speeds, it soaks up the bumps and it soaks up potholes, which we have a lot of in Malaysia. Soaks all those up quite well. It's actually a very, very uh, comfortable car to drive. And uh, which is quite surprising because even the seats are quite thinly padded. They're similar to the ones on the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. Uh, and they're also electronically powered, of course. But even though they may be thinly padded, but they're actually quite comfortable. There's no doubt about that. The other thing that I really like about the Ford Everest though, and this is something that I mention continuously every time I'm driving a Ford, is the anti active noise cancellation. Because what this results in is a very nice, comfortable interior. 
Now it uses these mics that are located up here, these uh, speakers or such, whatever they call it. And uh, how this works is, is that it emits uh, lower frequency or higher frequency noises to cancel out ambient sounds. So that results in a very nice, quiet, comfortable interior. I don't know if you notice the bike going past. You can see it, but you can't hear it. That's how an interior is supposed to be like. It's supposed to be nice, comfortable, very quiet place to be in. There's no doubt about that. Um, of course, as I said earlier, the quality of things feels really nice. But other than that, there are some plastic bits over here that makes it feel a little bit cheap. But besides that though, driving feel, the way this car puts down power, is very, very good. It's quite decent, similar to the Ford Ranger wall track. Not surprising, they do, they do after all share the same powertrain. But I do wish they came with pedal shifters though, that would give me better control uh, over power delivery of the Everest. But besides that though, it's a very nice car to drive. had my doubts when I first picked up the Ford Everest but I've been driving it for nearly a week and I'll tell you this that the Ford Everest is a total brute there are no other SUVs like it because like I said earlier there are no other SUVs that are capable of towing three tons there are no other SUVs that are capable of lugging over 750 kgs none of those SUVs that I mentioned can keep seven people comfortable inside not only that, but keep them safe because the, the Ford Everest actually comes with seven airbags. The Ford Everest is different than all of the SUVs that I mentioned. It's different because it's a rugged, hardcore brute. The Ford Everest is the type of SUV that you take camping, that you go out to your Kayu Balak trails. You can go out to almost anywhere. It's a go anywhere type of SUV. That's what sets it apart from all the other SUVs. Thank you for watching. This is Piston.my. As usual, do consider subscribing.